Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Tulsa King. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, we uh, have uh, the whole situation. I figured the moment his family left, that'd be when... Um, Dwight decides to roll up on Manny, and Manny, the moment it happened, he's like, oh, please, God, I know my family's going to be here soon. He knew what time it was, but he had to tell Dwight, it's like, yo, I'm here, and I love it because Dwight's like, it's Chicky the one that told me, he's like, wait, what? He's like, it's Chicky the one that told you to kill me. He's like, no, I haven't seen Chicky in 20 years. In fact, I thought Chicky sent you here to kill me. It is interesting and very coincidental. I guess it is just happenstance. Not unless Chicky knew and was kind of hoping for this. I don't know, because it's like... The fact is that Dwight and his name's current name's Manny, but his name's Armand. It's like for them to be in the same place and kind of have issues the way they do, you would assume that'd be something of the line of like, okay, so then maybe, maybe it feels a little too coincidental. Because I was like, yeah, it is. I mean, that's why he immediately, he's like, right, if you're here, that must mean they must have trapped me down. But it's like, they just gave me Tulsa. Once again, the parallel between him and, um, Stacy was the whole point that they both kind of got sent to quote unquote Siberia from their respective organizations and stuff, right? So it, this would seem like, as he kind of put it, banishment, punishment, imprisonment. So it's like, was that really the case or not? But obviously for Dwight, it's like, regardless of, yeah, you might have thought I was coming after you, you still try to pop me, you know? So it's like, yeah, we're not good. But then Armand's like, yeah, 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 yeah. He references a name and it's like, what? It's like, yeah, you were set up. He's like, I tried to warn you, but I wasn't able to. And he's like, that's why I've been living here in Tulsa for the past 19 years because I had to get away. He's like, I thought Shiki sent you to kill me because I knew too much. He, that's why he ran away in the first place. And it's like, yeah, he's like, because Pete set you up. And he's like, wait, Pete? It's like, yeah. So I don't know if the per the name they referenced because he was like, I don't know if that has anything to do with the whole because it, the whole point was like, right, you were held up for 25 years. No one thought you'd hold it down like that. He's like, but I did. It's like, yeah, but no one typically does. Like, they thought you was rat. That's the fact. That, that's interesting because when you break that down, he's like, oh, I left 19 years ago. It's like, they gave you six years before they were like, all right, man, he's he's kept it down for six years, but there's no guarantee he'll keep it for the next 19. So we got to do something. So I'm assuming this had like my initial thought is the name and everything. It didn't seem like it meant like it didn't seem like something we should necessarily know. But I'm assuming that's because Dwight supposedly. There's nothing supposed about it because we know he did kill someone in prison. So I'm assuming that's maybe that that name that got dropped by. Armand or slash Manny, I guess maybe that's supposed to be the person. So I'm like, oh, did they send someone, have someone in prison kill you? That whole, that, cause he said like it was a setup. So it's like, right, now for him, it's like, right, I came out holding it down all these years, especially cause he held it down for them and it cost him everything. It cost him his relationship with his wife, it cost him his marriage, it cost him his daughter. And as we see it, it like cost him his relationship with his siblings too. So it's like, his family all around, like it kind of screwed the pooch. And for what? He, he, he didn't come out rewarded. He got sit away from home. That was his reward for holding it down for 25 years. And it's almost like it wasn't. Now, you know, he recognizes like it wasn't even worth it, you know, because he even he's on, he's only working so hard in Tulsa to prove a point just to kind of shove it in their faces back in New York. But it's like, yeah, like it wasn't worth it considering all that he lost. It's, uh, the scales aren't even. And coming to that realization and kind of dealing with that, especially like on the family front, because he talks to his sister and, you know, we find out about his brother, Joe, uh, this episode about his brother's like sick. And he, and then by the end of the episode, he's already like he's he's dying. And um, Dwight got to say, you know, kind of goodbye. And I, I actually really quickly focusing on that. That was kind of like almost a very somber way to end this episode. Obviously, they kind of got a little bit of like a, a little jokey thing at the end there. But like there was this beautiful emotional moment when he was telling that story. He's like, yeah, remember when dad told us to go get that thing? And he ran into that guy, white hair, white beard. And you asked him if he was God. And he was like, well, if you think. If, if basically if the situation called for you and you looked at me and you saw God, then maybe I am God. Then maybe the person you saw is God. And he's like, if you see that guy again, you go with him. You know, it's like you're, you're. It's time. It's, it's okay to let go. And it's like you and me will catch up. Because he was telling your brother before, he's like, I'm sorry that things kind of played out the way. I'm sorry for so much, you know. 
and it, you know, his sister was like, right, he can't talk, but he'll squeeze my hand, and he he can hear us, you know, because the rest of the family's trying to get there as fast as they can to see him off and stuff, and I just, and just that moment, just like, that line to it, just like, we'll, we'll catch up later, you know, and I was like, oh, I was like, that's beautiful, like, it legitimately even talking, like, I was choking up watching it, and now I'm kind of about to get choked up again, I'm like, I, I'm, Man, I can't help it. I'm a sim I'm a sentimental motherfucker. Like that type of stuff hits me hard, dude. And so I just thought that was beautiful. But um other elements to the episode. Um Dwight's basically going back to the armor on thing really quickly. It's like, hey, you owe me three hundred dollars a week now or something like that. You know, in installment payments, and that's how we'll kind of even the score between us. And it turns out Armand's wife had no idea about his past, and now it's like, cool, I had no idea this was was about. It's like, oh, you've lied to me. He's like, I haven't really lied to you. It's just like, yeah, I was going to tell you the truth, but then eventually down the road, it kind of felt like, well, what's the point? I didn't need to anymore. It's a past I'd rather forget about, so it just became less and less important for me to tell you about my past. And it's like, yeah, his wife's not too keen on that and I guess it's like right with Dwight here they, I guess they were planning on moving to Florida I guess because she was like trying to like talk to a real estate person over zoom for like it's like oh yeah that, that's horse country and stuff and I love all that conversation's happening the dog is out front shitting on his lawn again and it's like you motherfucker it's like you're doing it in front of me too you little bastard I love it hey no no bad blood against the dog it's all his owner because especially because earlier when Manny was heading home the guy Larry rolled by gave him the middle finger it's like oh fuck you Larry um, either way, uh, so there's that situation, and I love, I guess it was from the racetrack, that little horse statue, he's like, no, nah, you can sell this for 20 grand, he's like, I can't sell it, because if I sell it, they'll think I stole it, it's like, they'll think I stole it, then if I'm selling it, he's like, put it back, he's like, I nearly broke my back or my neck trying to steal this thing, he's like, no one told you to do that in the first place, Manny, he's like, it's like, he's basically like, all this shoveling horse shit must have done something to your brain, he's like, put it back, also, Manny, going for it, it's hardcore cash, hard, hard, cold cash. It's what, cold hard cash. I, I, I butchered that most of on. Cold hard cash is what I want going for. It's like, man, it's like, no one told you to do that, man. I get the sentiment of like, yeah, we'll kind of square it up in like one giant lump sum and you'll get maybe 20 grand for this. It's like, what do you, what do you know? No, Manny, what are you talking about? Then they're also doing their little hustle on the side, uh, with the whole, uh, the nitro oxide stuff, you know, getting pe like selling that to people. Problem is, they're cutting into the biker gang we got introduced to last episode. That's kind of their territory. So, not an issue at first, but then the guys who didn't do anything to Bodie or uh, Tyson ended up getting like stomped. As you know, it's like, right, it makes them look weak and makes them look vulnerable. So they had to be taught a lesson. Now, whether they were straight up killed or whether they were just beaten to a bloody pulp as lesson, either both are pretty bad options. So later on, when uh, Bodie and them are selling it, still, they end up getting the crap beat out of them. And hey, like, you know, Dwight ain't some like slave driver being like, I can't believe it. He's like, no, he's like, hey, you did what you needed to do. Hey. You got jumped, you stood your ground, like the fact of the matter is, you know, sometimes you take a loss, he's like, but then, you know, all you got to do is get back up, and for him, it's like, yeah, let's uh, let's kind of handle business, we're going to go back, we're going to take our tanks that were stolen from us, and we're going to uh, get our money back, because uh, Mitch wants to be a part of this, but Dwight's like, nah, man, you got, you already got priors and stuff, I'm not about, you know, your own uh, probation and stuff like that, it's like, I'm not about to put you in a position where you might get busted, it's like, hey, you just stay here at the... Uh, the bar slash restaurant, and you just do your thing, you know, it's like, right, and I, I appreciate that, Dwight's like, yo, man, as someone who spent time in jail, like, I ain't trying to, like, you know, put myself in that position is one thing, but you, you're in a different situation, I'm not about to put you in that situation, so I thought that was pretty dope, and obviously, this was kind of a big blow to uh, Tyson, especially last episode, when he trying to hype himself up in the mirror, like, oh, you coming from a boy, got to come through a man, it's like, he kind of got jumped, and it makes you feel weak, makes you feel like a punk, and especially at, when everything else is going on, he has it out with his dad earlier in the episode well it was more so like yeah because his, uh, his dad noticed that Dwight had given him the ring he's like yeah the only people I see with pinky rings are British ar aristocracy and uh, mobsters and I could just assume that uh, your boss ain't no British aristocracy and for him it's like yeah I get good money I am a you know it's like oh you're being a chauffeur it's like yeah but he's a good dude he's like yo but is he a, is he a mobster he's a gangster and it's like his mom saying like no Tyson knows what's right from wrong it's like yeah but Tyson also sees 
sadly, you know, an opportunity before him to, like, yeah, he says later on that, like, yes, uh, college just wasn't for him. The, like, he got into it a little bit this episode, and obviously his parents, his mom is a little bit more sensitive about the subject, and it's kind of like, no, 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 because obviously, regardless of anything, that's still her baby, but her dad's like, you're, his dad's like, you're 25, you need to figure this out, like, are you going to waste every opportunity that me and your mom have provided for you? Like, when are we going to get paid back? He's like, all right, you want to get paid back? Tosses out the money, they're like, his dad's like, get out, don't come back, essentially. But, you know, it's just his dad, his dad loves him and doesn't want him to go down this route. That's why I brought it up in episode two, I believe, where I was like, I think his dad probably has a past. Like, the fact is that he's going, I mean, obviously no parent wants their child to be on this side of things. It's like, right, when we've given you every opportunity to, like, better yourself, to be away from that type of world, it's understandable. But, like, especially the way, like, his dad, Mark, like, rolled hard this episode, I was like, nah, man, like, there's got to be something... There's something more to that. Like, the fact is that it feels like there's there's kind of... He's kind of got that dog in him. Like, like he probably has, like, a past. Like, I brought it up in episode two. I was like, he might have either been a part of that world or he, he grew up in a neighborhood where, like, it was, the, it was that type of situation. You wouldn't have much option. You were either, like, you were working in the streets or you were going to starve type of situation. And it's like, he probably knew people that died or got locked up. And that was kind of my main motivation on why he wanted more for Tyson but maybe that's not the case but like fact is like you wouldn't expect any kind of like he seems like a suburban dad and for him to kind of hold his own the way he did later on and the way he's just like yo let's get to it then like that that like I said he's got that dog in him he got that that fight in him and then obviously his son kind of gets that from him a little bit too because obviously Dwight's got a plan of like yo let's all get together Bodie doesn't want to do this because he doesn't want violence and I love Dwight's like Nah, man, he's like, we're going to take a more non-violent route. It's like, yeah, taking bats to everyone. Yeah, that's super the non-violent route. But I do love, like, legitimately, and oh my god, they had to play the song, too. War by Edwin Starr, because I, I, you know, it's a song we've all heard multiple times throughout our lives. I want to feel like one of the first movies I ever saw in it was probably, like, Rush Hour. But I'm sure, like, probably, like, that's the one of the movies I associate with it, but I've probably heard it before then. I've never actually looked, until just now, I'd never looked up, because I was like, I assumed the song was called War, but I didn't know, but it's called War, and it's by Edwin Starr, which I, that's a name I'm not familiar with, so I was like, oh, first time I'd ever looked that up, and I'm 30 years old, and I've never looked that up before, interestingly enough. But either way, it was just like, and it just, I got a little too hyped about that scene, especially because the fact is that Mark... Uh, Tyson's dad wanted to take part in because he's like, yo, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And it's like, yo, we may have issues, but these are the people that actually jumped my son. I'm going to get to it then. And I love that, you know, Dwight's like, yo, like, I'm his boss. Your son works for me. It's like, yeah, he's a grown man. Is like, are you coming with or not? But Mark's like, I'm going to go with. And Dwight's, Dwight was kind of impressed. He's like, Dwight, uh, how how you doing? He's like, how are you doing? I'm Mark. And it's like, all right, Mark, let's go. And everyone would bat to him. I even love that it was... Um, what was it? Uh, I think it was Fred. Fred was like, yo, me and so-and-so are going to like go in there, call some stuff, just, like shit talking. The home dude was like, wait, what? No, we're... And he's like, shut up. We'll, we'll draw them out. And then you guys circle them. And then Bodie was kind of like, no, we're not doing that. But Dwight was like, honestly, that's a really... He's like, no, no. He's like, Fred, I really like that. And then it's like, no, nah, they went straight up and it's just like took them on and like took bats to all of them. I loved it. It's like everyone was really getting into it, homie. I love it. And just after we're sitting at the bar, like, kind of having that victory drink, I even love Mark being like, this ain't the bonding moment you think it is, son. So it's like, right, you will always have a home if you choose to. So at the end of the day, it is, it's your choice to make what you're going to do with yourself. And for Tyson, he's stuck between, like, yeah, I think he gained a lot of respect for his dad in that moment. But I think it's for him, he believes that this might be the only route for himself to kind of find himself to be, be his own man type of situation. It's like, he feels like he can learn so much from Dwight. This is a guy who's kind of lived it. He He's done it, you know, and he's kind of building from scratch. And I'd like to be here on the, the forefront of that to learn from him. And I even love that Dwight uh, was about to pay Armand, too, and everything. And he's like, oh, shouldn't this pay toward? He's like, no, no, no. This is apples and oranges. You did what you did. You came through. So I'm going to pay you for that. But our arrangement is still on. But I do love how that ties into it at the very end where, like, Armand just had enough, went over, put the... Uh, he stepped in dog shit, put it in Larry's face, pushed him to the ground and start hitting him over and over again with the shoe. And it's like, yo, we're not going anywhere. This is our home. Because that dog kind of got awoken. It was awakened in Armand 
after so long because I, he'd been kind of playing like the suburban guy life for you know husband and father life for so long that he kind of but now it's like yeah that that mobster's coming out a little bit you know so Dwight's having kind of a bad influence on a lot of people but even Tyson at the end is like I, it seems like he's kind of making his choice he's like oh I'm going to dye my hair amber and it's like oh okay you should do your, you be yourself and he's like be myself and it's like yeah kind of not try to be his dad not try to be who his dad want or mom wants him to be just be himself so we'll, we'll see how that turns out it can get nasty I didn't talk about it but I do enjoy that bad face is there too he was like yeah I don't have many friends so I appreciate being a part of this but he went in there kind of woke some ass because I mean from the moment Dwight was like Honestly, me and Badface are good. He's like, I'd love to have a, a guy like that. And it's like, yo, I guess we can see Badface from time to time. So I, I love that. Because I even love Bodie. He's like, well, if we're going to do this, I'm going to bring Badface. And it's like, yeah, he, he comes through uh, when you need him to. So because uh, he had Bodie's back and Bodie, uh, like, yeah, Bodie was kind of all nonviolent. But when the time came, he, he got into the swing of things, pun intended. So. That's just some uh, some very very interesting in, um, developments. Once again, like I said, I know this show this show's gonna have its like like I said, I think this is gonna be more like I said the more fun crime drama and then, like it'll probably have serious moments like the Dwight stuff was some serious and powerful stuff like the whole thing between him his sister and his brother. Yeah, but overall, I think. Um It, it, just, it continues just to be a fun show. It's interesting, too, because obviously there's a whole situation with Stacy. Uh, she kind of had a hookup situation, but uh, I, I wonder if that was more so like a, right, because she made a promise to herself the Dwight thing wasn't going to happen again. So I guess she was like, yeah, we're not about to go down that territory. I wonder, is it or is it kind of the awkwardness of where things kind of left off last episode because she called him up about the dog, but he was in the middle of kind of dealing with the whole Manny slash Armand thing. So it's like he was too caught up in that, you know, so... I, it might be a combination of that might have been a thing where she's kind of like, yeah, I probably shouldn't like, yeah, we, we talked and everything, but I shouldn't pursue anything beyond that. We'll see how that ultimately all ends up uh, playing out or not. I did get a glimpse of the next episode. It does seem like he's going back to New York, at least for his brother's funeral. Who knows what that's going well. His ex will probably be there, and probably so will his daughter, because even his sister was like, yeah, like a, like even her and I guess maybe Tina kind of kept her distance from the family as a whole after everything went down with her and her dad. Like, after the last time she probably saw her dad, like, she grew up to kind of resent him. So, probably just separated from the family in general because, like, Joanne was like, yeah, he, she doesn't um, really talk to me either. But she was coming over because they were all going to go visit, you know, Joe in the, um, in the hospital and everything. So, I'm assuming we're going to have a, run, a family run-in and reunion in many different regards. Um, cause it seems like once again, like it wasn't just Tina, he cut off. It was everybody because it wasn't just for it, it, probably just like with Tina. It wasn't for her sake. It was really about his sake the being separate from his family, like them, you know, I mean, who knows? They probably had issue with a lot of the choices he made. They were probably the ones telling him rat. Did you, if you didn't do this, tell the truth, like don't be up in the prison for 25 years for something you didn't do. And it's like, once again, it wasn't even worth it. All the time lost, the family lost, you know, and he'll never get that time back. That's the, that's the problem. So we'll see where things kind of take us going forward on that front. Um, I only watched that, that tiny, tiny bit of the preview. So I don't know what else the rest, uh, what else the, uh, next episode has in store. I'm assuming that biker gang, I'm going to take this light and that lying down. So that's definitely going to escalate to shit really, really hitting the fan. But We'll see ultimately how that plays out too. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.